Good morning, all you gearheads. This is Brent with Lactons Motorsports. This is our uh, 464 Cleaver. Um, if you watched the video from uh, a couple days ago, you got to see the short block go together and the oil pan and timing cover and everything go on. I do have the balancer on now. This is a SFI Race Power Bond balancer. Uh, these things are top notch. I've spun these very high RPM, made a lot of horsepower with them. The, uh, the balancer marks are always dead on. Uh, they don't come off easily, such as other manufacturers. They're easy to read. Um, just a good, uh, a good harmonic balancer. They have multiple flavors for whatever level of engine that you have. But we got that on there, got our timing pointer on, and made sure that it's dead nuts. And... Um, you notice the oil pan is off i jinxed myself at the end of the past video saying that uh hope didn't have to come off again um so i was editing the video from the other day and saw or reminded myself that i didn't check my rod side to side clearance so Checking rod side to side clearance is uh, one of those measurements that you need to have. It'll tell you if you put a rod on backwards. It'll tell you uh, if if the tolerances have stacked against you. Uh, so that's uh, that's a necessary measurement, and uh, the OCD part of me wouldn't let that go. So. Pull the oil pan back off. I've spent probably another hour uh, cleaning everything back up. But uh, I, I just try to go into each build knowing that I've done everything to the best of my ability. If, if something happens after that, then I know that, you know, I, I did the best job that I could. And uh, we'll fix it after that. But um, stuff like this that I catch as, as the engine's being assembled, uh, I want to fix it right now. Uh, while uh, I'm actually waiting on FedEx to bring another oil pan gasket, I didn't have the one that I wanted to use, so um, waiting on waiting on them to show up right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this time to measure for our push rods. Our um, sorry, I saw a piece of dirt. Um, our band lifters came in, and uh, I've already notched the oil hole so that they will oil. That's Pretty standard operating procedure for, for those and for other brands as well. Um, we want to get oil up to our valve springs, especially when, you know, those are, you know, 750, 800 pounds. But uh, we can take our time now and measure for push rods and make sure that our geometry is, is correct. Uh, when I did the piston to valve clearance check on uh, the video the other day, uh, we had a thin pattern, but it's probably a little bit too close to the intake side, closer than what I wanted, and uh, we're going to try to raise that up a little bit to get that geometry right. <laughs> we're still waiting on our uh, head gaskets, but um, I've got a, a 40 thousandths uh, standard gasket. I keep head gaskets on the wall uh, for mock-up purposes and things like that, so I'll throw a head gasket on here. It'll be within four thousandths, and that's close enough. Um, and we'll get our head on, get our lifters in, get our TND rockers on, and uh, we'll set up our geometry. All right, so we got our sub plate bolted to the head. Um, the little exhaust plates are separate. Um, they bolt to the head as well, and then they have a bolt that goes in this side to this bar to keep it from, from rotating. This is our intake rocker. Um, I have a real push rod in here. Because we're checking geometry, I'm not really worried about push rod length right now. We can measure push rod length when we nail our geometry. Remember that shaft mounted rockers, which is what this is, it's not a, a stud mounted rocker, it's a shaft mounted rocker. The shims or uh, the thickness of the bar dictate your geometry and then you measure for push rods. In a stud mounted rocker, uh, the push rod length dictates all of that. So you have to use whichever uh, method to check uh, geometry and push rod length on whatever engine that you're working on. I've got some Sharpie on our uh, valve stem 
and we've got our intake uh, rocker ready to rock and roll here so we're going to roll this over with one valve spring on here it's probably going to want to kick back on me but I've got a, a two foot half inch drive ratchet on here so I can have some more leverage. We're gonna roll this over one more time. Get a good picture of what our rocker arm's doing. Then we'll take it off and check our mark. Here is our first pattern with a 60,000th shim. We'll go up just a hair higher and see if we can get that just a little bit more towards the center and a little bit narrower. Um, we'll go another 30 thousandths and, and see what that gives us. Okay, this is 90 thousandths worth of shim. Just wanna take a second and check out our push rod tube clearance. Let me see if I can get a good light in here. That's a 5 16 push rod. I've got, I don't know, about seven miles of clearance around it. Um, once we get everything dialed in here with the correct push rod length and everything, we'll get a good measurement, but five sixteenths, um, seven sixteenths push rod would be, uh, let me see if I can do math in my head in, on, uh, at the spur of the moment here. So that would be uh, two sixteenths eighth inch so 60 thousandths on each side right um we got plenty of room for that we may be able to go even to a half inch push rod okay here's our 90 thousandths mark so the mark is getting our witness mark is getting considerably wider uh, remember the the goal was not to get it perfectly centered the goal is as least contact as you can get because the more contact that means that the rockers translating more motion into rolling over the valve tip without translating that motion into pushing the valve down you're just you're just rolling around the, the valve tip uh, you want to move the valve as much as you can so um, I want to knock it back down to the 60,000 shim and um, we'll see if we can duplicate our past results, but we'll also check it at mid lift and just see. That'll actually help us just a little bit on our push rod tube clearance. Not that, that we needed any help there, but it'll help center up the, the push rod in the hole. All right, so I pulled that 30,000 shim out, so it's got 60. This is mid lift, and it's also the most narrow pattern. So if you look, we've got a right angle. If we draw a line from the center, of our trunnion out to our roller tip and then down it's a right angle or very very close to it uh, most narrow pattern mid lift geometry check checks out i'm getting 750 at the valve with lash so we're in good shape with um with the intake side so our geometry is now good what i can do now is take this all back apart pull this push rod out put a push rod length checker in it and we can um, uh, measure for the push rod. Now, TND Rocker says in order for this adjuster to oil correctly, you back it all the way out and then turn it one full turn in. Um, that's where they want the initial position to be. Now, you can end up a little bit uh, north or south of that. It's okay, but that's the initial position position that they want you to start out in so take all this back apart and uh, put our adjuster in the correct spot and get our push rod length measurement and see what it is push rods usually come in lengths of 25 thousandths increments so we'll be able to fine tune that then we'll get to the exhaust side so here's our pattern really thin and everything checks out so we'll get um our push rod length checker back in there and and check our push rod length all right so we've got um our adjuster i'm going to back it all the way out we're going to go one turn in so there's half a turn 
There's a full turn. We're going to lock this down. I've got our exhaust valve opening. So our exhaust lifter is starting to open a little bit. That ensures that our intake lifter is on the heel of the uh, cam. We're going to run our push rod link checker out. And then I went too far. What I'm doing here is um, using my feeler gauge. These set at about 18 thousandths. Um, so that means it's going to be about 12 thousandths cold. So that's what I'm setting it at. So there's a good measurement for that. So we've got our adjuster where it's supposed to be. We've got our lash set. Our lifter is set. And now all I have to do is just measure this push rod. Nine inches and nine thousandths. That is dangerously close to nine inches even. So I am going to mark down that we are going to order um, a half inch push rod, heavy wall, double taper in nine inches of length. And that should be extremely rigid for our intake side. All right, I forgot to show the, the last iteration, but here's this one with a 60 thousandths shim. It's wider than what I would like to see. So I'm gonna go back to no shim and uh, see what that looks like. So while I've got you here, here's how much room we got. I wish this camera would focus, there we go. Here's how much room we got between the push rod and the head. We've got plenty there, but the issue is gonna be with this bar, the hole in this bar right here. Um, let me see if I can get you in there. There's just not that much room. So, uh, this is a 5 16 push rod. I think, uh, if we put this in the mill and clearance it just a little bit, we should be able to get a 7 16 push rod in there, uh, which is still pretty heavy. So, I'm going to take all this back apart again, check our pattern, and uh, make a determination on our push rod length. All right, so this is our exhaust. The, uh, I, obviously this is in the way right here, but you can kind of make out the valve stem of the exhaust side, the roller tip, and then the fulcrum. So if we draw a line, it is not quite 90 degrees. The thing is, I've got this down as far as it'll go, so no shims. Um, the pattern is still a little bit wide. I'll show you here in a second. But I think what we're gonna do is, and we'll have plenty enough, I'm looking at this hole right here because that's where the stand bolts to the other stand. So I think I'm gonna machine about 60 thousandths off the bottom of the exhaust pedestals. And then we can recheck it again Obviously, that won't get done today, but it's going to have to happen, I think. And if I cut 60 off, I can always shim 60 back if I have to. But I think what's going to, what that's going to do is it'll lower our uh, geometry and get the pattern closer to what the intake side is seen. It'll also help me on this hole right here. Um, it'll move that push rod down um, and give me some more room. So. Uh, probably can knock out both of these steps all at one time. I can cut into this a little bit, give us some clearance, and also cut these stands down. But uh, we'll get this thing dialed in. We'll, we'll, let's look at this pattern real quick. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a little bit wider than what I need, um, but let's look at it. All right, so you can see the differences here. Um, real skinny pattern versus this big fat boy right here. So that's what my plan of action is. Cut these stands down, then uh, open up these holes right here in, in, in this bar. And that'll allow us to dial this in closer and give us more room on our push rod. So I'm not even going to measure for exhaust push rod now. I can go ahead and order the intakes and have them in here. But, um, 
yeah we just need to we just need to get this closer the the mid lift was not right the pattern's not right so that should be an indicator that we need to do something else all right so we are back where we started oil pan is back on uh fedex dropped off my gasket and i got that put on um did check the rod side clearance we had 21 22 thousandths uh everything is back up on the engine waiting to be bagged up and uh, i've already sent an email to uh, order those push rods and i want to drop off our uh, tnd mounting bars and to have those whittled on so we're making progress just waiting on head gaskets and a few other parts and we should be ready to rock and roll thank you guys for your uh tuning in for this episode and uh hope that uh the geometry and push rod length uh check help you uh in your own build at home and uh look forward to seeing your comments and uh, if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button talk to you guys later see you next week